All right, so today we're going to talk about Damiano Caruso's second place in the Giro d'Italia, um, the power analysis, what's required, etc., etc. So this this Excel might seem a little bit too heavy, but we'll add some pictures and you know make it make it more palatable. Uh, but ultimately, what I did is I just went through every single stage, looked at the normalized power, looked at the time, and then I pretty much watch every stage from kilometer zero ish. So I, I have a pretty good memory of what happened, and then just wrote some notes on it. Um, so you can basically see here. So anyway, first stage, we're just going to go stage by stage, roughly to see. Now at the end, I'm going to make some conclusions and link some things together because I think some of it individually, you're like, okay, that's one stage. But I think in a three week Grand Tour, what's really interesting is the difference in week one and week three uh, and how that plays out. So first first stage, um, obviously he's going for Mikael Lander. So that's a key point to make is that his team leader is Lander. He's the domestique until stage five, which you can see here, Lander abandons. So that is obviously very sad for Lander. I was very upset at the time. Um, Lad really needs to win a Grand Tour at some point and he's running out of opportunities, especially with Poggy going to Welter now. It's going to be tough. But anyway, so he did a good TT here. Finished 25th, 6.7 watts per kilo for 10 minutes is or 9 minutes. It was pretty outrageous, to be honest. Um, considering from his training video, which I'll, I'll put here, he didn't ride his TT by a crazy amount. Um, and he was only 30 seconds down on Ghana, which is not too bad, um, considering he's not really a specialist. Next stage, sprint stage, no worries. 224 watts, um, four and a half hours, easy. Um, the following stage was the one that Taka van der Horn won, which was a sprint stage. But, well... It was like a Sagan stage, but ended up being a break. It's actually quite a hard stage. You can see a normalized 300, but the last bit, they sort of rode every climb about six watts per kilo-ish. Um, and it wasn't crazy, crazy, um, crazy easy, to be honest. Um, following stage is the first, like, mountaintop finish, um, which Bernal, well, sorry, Joe Dombrowski won it. Um, I think it was up to Sestola, but I might be wrong. I think that's actually the, the second one. Um, but again, Lander was the team leader, um, so they did... The uh, final climb at 6.4 watts per kilo for 14 minutes. Um, and the climb before was done at 6.2. Four and a half thousand kilojoules. That's a lot. Okay, he's quite heavy. He's like 67 kilos. Um, but yeah, he only lost 11 seconds to burn out. So pretty good position. All in all, 317 normalized for five hours. Next one, sprint again. Harder sprint stage, 250 normalized. But again, probably zone two. Um, and then this was the mountaintop finish, uh, which was Sestola one, which was pretty, um, pretty decent one, to be honest, because... Um, yeah, like Ineos tried to split it in a crosswind, um, and it was hard, uh, and then, oh, sorry, this wasn't, this, the, um, and then basically Gino Mader was up the road, last climb wasn't that steep until the end, 36 minutes, it's 5.6, it's not really that crazy, um, and he only lost 13 seconds to burn out, and it was basically the steep part where the differences were made, again, sprint, very easy, 240, normalized for four hours, um, four and a bit hours, this is all in hours here, so 4.66, um, is about four hours, 40, um, and then again, mountaintop finish. This was um, definitely harder, um, but again, it wasn't too crazy. This was the one Victor Lafay won. It was a break, so basically they just rode pretty steady until the final climb where they whacked it at 6.6 .6 for five minutes or so. All stayed together. So you can see so far, um, we're, we're almost getting to the first week. It's a, it's a long first week. It's like nine days. Um, pretty decent length, like none of them okay are three hours, but they're not too long either. Uh, and then this was the one that Bernal won, the mountaintop finish. Um, so basically what happened was they rode pretty hard on the first stick, the first climb, you can see here, 25 minutes of five and a half watts per kilo um, to get to establish the break. And that wasn't too bad. This was also the stage Matteo Moric crash, so um, Bahrain weren't in great shape. Uh, and then the last climb was like 10 minutes of six watts per kilo, or 5.8. But the thing was the steep climb when Bernal launched it in the big ring up the 12%. Um, and that was seven watts per kilo for three and a half minutes. And he still lost 12 seconds. So Bernal was on a really, really good day. But these punchy finishes, he didn't train for them at all. But you don't really lose too much time. So if we look at the majority of, um, and then the next one is a sprint stage. So basically irrelevant. Um, apart from it was quite hard on the last climb because they tried to drop all the climbers. And they did. And Sagan won the stage. However, if we look overall total, none of them are too crazy. Like the shorter ones are obviously done at quite high watts per kilo, but the longer climbs here, like this one, which Gino made a one, 36 minutes at 5.6. Like that's about, that's like quite well below threshold for him. So pretty chill. Um, and then we've got the rest day. Again, rest day, not too, quite hard. 250 normalized, did like 309 norm, uh, watts up this climb. And it was really surging and stuff. And I guess he just wants to keep the legs open, which makes sense. But 
I thought it was harder than expected. I thought it would just be like two hours, 200 watts, easy. And then maybe two sprints or three sprints. But no, nah, seems to like it harder. Yes, he is quite old now, so he knows what he needs to do. The following stage was the Montalcino stage, which was gravel. Pretty hard stage all round, 320 normalized. The beginning bit where Ineos led it up was really, really hard. And then the last climb was six watts per kilo for 20 minutes after 3,000 kilojoules, which is the magic number that everyone seems to say. The study I read, and it was like, if you can do six watts per kilo after 3,000 kilojoules, you're probably going to win a World Tour race. Um, unfortunately, he had burnout and lost 30 seconds to him. But, you know, if you're in the break, you probably would have won that stage. Uh, so yeah, it was really, really impressive numbers. Um, obviously, it came after a rest day. So decent. Well, they're a lot more fresh than it probably would have been. But still, it's probably some of the best numbers we've seen so far, um, in my opinion, because, yeah, like I think it was it was a hard stage the whole time. On a, like It was just on the whole day, um, pretty much. Uh, and then the following one was a breakaway, which was like six hours. Um, it wasn't really that bad, to be fair, that they were they were all pretty chill. Um, and then the next sprint stage, again, 190 normalized. I mean, like 90% of you watching this video could get around that sprint stage if you had some bunch ability. Uh, it was just really easy. Uh, and then we got Zonkalam, which again, break up the road, so a little bit different. Um, but he did, he had a good result here, finished like 10. So these are all the positions here. So you can see like some of them he did, he's done pretty well. Obviously the sprint stage is sort of relevant. They only had one climb on the day. It wasn't really too bad. It's like 21 minutes at 5.6 watts per kilo. So again, it's just like tempo. Like they'll be breathing for sure, but they won't be like, oh, hey, this is hard. They'll just be like, yeah, yeah no worries. Um, I was probably like 90%-ish um, of the threshold. And then Zonkalam was really hard actually, but not, it wasn't the steep side from the beginning. I don't know if you, if you can all remember it, but it was actually not too bad, like maybe eight, nine percent. And then the last three K is at 12%. So you can see here, like the average was only six watts per kilo for 40 minutes, which is a lot, like a lot after probably like what, 4,000 kilojoules. So that again, that's big numbers. That's like ridiculous numbers. Um, but the most impressive thing was the last 13 minutes when Bernal attacked, he did 6.2 watts per kilo and still lost 40 seconds to Bernal. Bernal was absolutely flying on that day. Like over three kilometers, losing like 40 seconds like that, it's probably like Bernal was doing six and a half or something stupid. <clears throat> Sorry about my voice. But yeah, again, this is one of the breakout performances in my opinion. Okay, like on the stage, finished 10, he lost some time. But again, six watts per kilo for 40 minutes after 4,000 kilojoules, that's when you're like, okay, this guy is, is seriously good. Um, this was uh, when Victor Kampanats won, my hero. Um, that was into Slovenia. Again, 260 normalized, four hours, nothing too crazy. It wasn't like easy, easy, but once the break had gone, they just they just soft tap round, um, nothing crazy. Again, this was um, this was this canceled stage that was supposed to be the queen stage with like 6,000 meters climbing, got to 2,000 meters twice. Anyway, it didn't, it had the passage jowl, and it had this climb before, which I can't remember his name, but they, that was when the break went on the first climb, 5.3 watts per kilo, 40 minutes. And it was pretty hard in the valley, about 290 normalized. Did another climb before it, again, about five and a half. And in the Passage Jow was really where Egan Bernal stamped his authority and binned everyone by about 30 to 40 seconds. Um, and Damiano Caruso, I think, actually put more time into Bardet, but then got caught on the descent. Um, and they did six watts per kilo for 33 minutes, which does not sound too good. But number one, it was a really hard stage. You can see 330 normalized. Number two goes up to like 2,400 meters, 2,300 meters, I think. So again, altitude is a big, big uh, factor. And the Zonkalan, for instance, just doesn't go that high. Maybe it's like 1,800 meters. So that is um, a key thing to remember uh, about all the climbing performances, just the altitude. But a really impressive ride again. Um, he finished third on the day um, and was pretty outrageous. Then next day, rest day, pretty hard again. Um, if we look at this, this second week, it was actually quite short. Um, but if you look at the normalized, they're all pretty high apart from the one sprint stage and the one breakaway stage. The, re the rest of them are all like 317. There's a lot of like hard stages. Um, and I think this really set up the last week. Um, and I think in some ways the Giro, if we look at it in this way, you can see the 10 day block was hard and then they had a rest day and then they had it like sort of spiced up the gravel stage and mountain things. And the last one, really, really, really hard. Um, so we'll get into it now. Um, actually, we'll just do rest day quickly. Again, it went pretty hard. Did some 20 second sprints. Decent day out, about an hour and 40, um, 45. Um, so this was again, was a mountain top finish. Uh, this is Alpa de Sega, uh, which Bernal was the one who blew up big time. Dan Martin won the stage, finished fifth on it. First climb, it was like pretty flat, downhill. One climb, 5.4 watts per kilo, 45 minutes. 
which is pretty hard for the first climb. Like it's definitely harder than you'd expect. So like normally you'd probably expect that to be like 5.2, 5, but pretty hard. And the last climb was done 5.8 watts per kilo after 3,700 kilojoules for 35 minutes. The number wasn't actually that high. I don't know if people messed up their nutrition or maybe it was really hot, which I think it might have been, or maybe it was just quite a hard stage. I mean, it was like 3.40 normal, so it's a pretty hard stage, but nothing absolutely bonkers. Um, but he did lose 50 seconds to Simon Yates. So yeah, maybe maybe it was harder than that um, than you thought. But again, you know, maybe you, you would have thought slightly higher. wasn't too out of altitude. But anyway, sometimes I think maybe just the way the race is raced, it can be tiring, but maybe the numbers don't show it or like in the normalized, because normalized is a bit of a, a fickle beast. Um, and we'll get into that why at the end about why he hasn't had any ridiculous days out. Um, the finish, and then we had this, which was uh, when uh, Betio won the breakaway. Pretty hard day. Um, sorry, pretty easy day, uh, but hard in the break. They finished a long way down, like probably like 10 minutes down, maybe more. Uh, and then the next one again was a mountaintop finish, which Simon Yates won. And this is when he'd been burnout again, Yates, but not by much. And people thought, is burnout cracking? So pretty much a flat stage most of the day. One climb, 15 minutes of 5.4 watts per kilo, sitting in. That was, you know, they probably went quite hard in the front. And then it was actually quite hard into the running. It was about 290 normalized for like 40 minutes into the in, or into the running of the climb. And then Simon Yates did a mega turn at the bottom. Uh, sorry, not Simon Yates, James Knox for uh, Jao Almeida. Uh, and then Yates attacked across that. He did half an hour at 6.1 watts per kilo after 3,300 kilojoules. So again, that's an outrageous performance. To think about doing that in the third week of a Grand Tour, again, unbelievable actually unbelievable um okay if we caught it compared to the tour it's nothing pagacha did six and a half but you know pagacha pagacha but again crazy crazy numbers and again still lost time to yates and then we've got the last one the last stage road stage of the giro and the boy finally won now first claim first climb was a uh, paso san bernardino which is like not too steep uh somewhere took it on a lot of the at the top and made it really hard then did a downhill attack, and that's where he got away. So the first climb was about 4.8 watts per kilo for an hour and 20. It was probably a little bit harder if you went on the normalized. Um, then they whacked it on the descent, and they got like, Bill Bow was there, um, Bade was there, Caruso, and another somewhere, blad. I can't remember who it was. They all pulled turns. Then they went up the Splugen Pass, which was done at 5.7 watts per kilo for 24 minutes. But considering they were, they were doing through and off, it was quite hard. There was actually quite impressed. I think that was a really impressive performance, that one alone, because it wasn't like they were sitting in and did 5.7. It was pretty hard. And then the last climb of the day, I think, is the most unbelievable performance. I think uh, Caruso's Giro did 15 minutes at 6.2 watts per kilo, had a little flat part, and then did the last six minutes at 6.2. And all in all, it was 21 minutes at 5.8 watts per kilo after 4,000 kilojoules on stage 20 of the Giro which is just bonkers. And the thing is, you look early on, he only did, he did 6.7 for nine minutes in a TT position. Okay, it's a TT position. But like, he's got a lot better. Like on the first breakaway thing, like he did six watts, uh, no, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, yeah, so after um, this bit here, he lost 11 seconds to burn out and he did like 6.4 for 14 minutes. Uh, okay, after four and a half thousand kilojoules. But in the last week, Managed to do 6.2 for basically the same time in the last week. And that is ridiculous because that's the difference between like good riders, well, no, outrageous riders and like the best in the world because he just doesn't seem to get tired. Like think about it, like the first week and the last week, basically similar-ish numbers, maybe even more impressive numbers than the last week because this stage wasn't too hard before while the one on, on the stage 20 he had it really, really hard. So, unbelievable. TT, no data. But now did 5.8 watts per kilo for 40 minutes and finished 30 seconds back. So, you can probably safely say Caruso was doing about 5.8 as well, but just a slightly heavier, maybe 5.6. But sort of irrelevant, the TT. It's a bit annoying, he doesn't have data. But the question is, why are none of his normalized over 350? So, if you look at Paris Bay, for instance, the normalized will be 350 for the winner for about six to seven hours. And the reason it is, is number one is Grand Tour. So none of the stages are normally outrageously hard because everyone wants to save the whole time. Like they don't often like actually throw everything into the climb. They'll go really deep, but they'll be like, nah, nah, there's no point. Well, you know, we'll just, we'll just save a little bit. So that's one of the reasons. The other reason is that on the mountains, when you're 
descending, obviously you're doing not very many watts. So if it's really hairpinny, you can get quite a big normalized, but if it's not, you lose a lot of watts there. And so that basically means in a mountain finish, in a mountain like scenario, which is where most of the hard stages in the Giro are, there aren't many like medium mountain stages which are really hard and they took them on, then it means that the normalized on the climb is really high. Like you know, you do 370, 380, 390, for 40 minutes but then because it's like so low on the descents it cancels each other out which is why the normalized doesn't look as impressive because like i don't want to be rude but like four and a half hours at 330 normalized is like hard but like a lot of people can do that who are like conti but it's just because it doesn't really represent how hard it actually is um it's better to look um on my notes and look at the the watts per kilo um and i guess the other takeaway is that endurance is is key because most of these climbs before the finish are ridden not at threshold and even the last climb of the day sometimes they're even not running at threshold they're running below because they're just so tired but the point is you just need to be able to ride at stupid numbers throughout the whole grand tour um but yeah that's my conclusion from looking at caruso's training data first then his racing data um he's just got an unbelievable endurance